So professional patient back again. Um, today I'm going to talk about symptoms of sickle cell or one specific symptom um, which is internal bleeding in the eye which is referenced or called sickle retinopathy. Uh, really hot right now but um, yes sickle retinopathy is pretty much a situation where your blood vessels will burst in your eye and um, you'll end up having internal bleeding. People with diabetes also have um, something quite similar. Um, but for sickle cell, it's not really widely known about. Um, and when it happens to you, it's a shock to your system. You're like, what the hell is going on here? Um, so I'm just going to go through the journey of my own experience and then throw in a few information about the... I want to say about the condition. Yeah, but about this specific symptom. Um, obviously we know sickle cell literally affects anywhere and everywhere it wants to, which is kind of frustrating because, um, I'm making it say kind of, it's very frustrating. Um, but specifically when it comes to a situation where you didn't even realize this could happen, it's even more like it just blindsides you. No pun intended. Well, anyway, um, when it comes to this so for me personally, I didn't have a clue I was experiencing this or this was something that was happening to me. Apparently people will know and get floaters beforehand. So these are like small dark dots that like go over your peripheral vision. I hadn't a clue. I didn't see no floaters. I didn't see no flashes, nothing. And one day I was just going about my merry way and then I started to see these clear these two clear circles over my right eye and they were clear they weren't like fully like I just couldn't see past them but they weren't like dark or anything so I was like what the hell is this and um I was someone was like maybe go to the hospital to check me who like half of my life or half of my adult life has been in hospital I was like is this really I, I'm not sure if I want to go through the whole system so hopefully it'll just clear itself up you know having unnecessary hope you know or having an unrealistic optimistic hope yeah so literally I kept busy it was all right whatever and um I literally was watching on the block I remember I loved that show I was watching on the block it was one of the most like epic ep um episodes something amazing was happening i was watching it and next thing you know i just see this black thing squirting through my vision like i could see it no one else could and that's very scary that's the scariest thing about sickle cell is that you can feel see and experience it and nobody else can so it just squirts this black thing just and i was like what is happening and it was choo choo I remember like three, four pulses of this black jet thing coming out into my peripheral and whatever you want to call vision. Um, and I just sat there because it's peripheral and then there's the, uh, I need to go and check my terms, but yeah, it's the main part of your vision too. So I was just like, what is going on? And at this point, I knew I probably had to take myself to the hospital. And thank goodness, I, well, not thank goodness, but my cousin had experienced something similar. So he gave me advice. He was like, go to Moorfield. They're very experienced. They know what they're doing. Went there. The facilities, amazing. Waiting time, honestly. Honestly. So waited for three, four hours, just chilling there, not knowing what the hell's going on, what happening, what's happening to me. And I mean, it doesn't hurt, but it's uncomfortable because it's like your your body's tensed up like what is happening. Anyway, they told me that this has potentially been happening for a long time. Like, this was a build up over a long time because the sickle cell will starve oxygen from those vessels. Those vessels will die and then new ones will try to grow. And when they're trying to grow, there's tension between the dead old vessel and the new vessel. And boom, that's where the popping happens. So I'm here like, oh my gosh, you know. So these issues were, the dead, the dying of these vessels were way back when. And they said all they can do is monitor. 
oh lord he's gonna give me strength i was like wow then i mean they said they're not gonna do anything drastic no laser surgery or no nothing because it's only a bleed it's not like um it's not a retinal detachment my whole eye hasn't cleared over where i cannot see because this happens to people like their whole eye will just go black these things haven't happened so they don't want to fiddle and mess around and i was like okay fine fine and i was more concerned with my art life as in if i want to pick up a paintbrush will i be able to use my eye properly thank goodness now this is like i'm talking this happened last year maybe a year and a half ago or a year and two months ago so this happened then so now i can still see but there's like remnants and little particles that are still in my eye um but another sign is like what i'm also getting now are these light flashes they're just flashing and i can tell something is brewing in that eye because before that i didn't have no flashes i had nothing and now it's like constant flashes just and i'm just like as if it's going up the optic nerve look at me throwing all these words in anyway but it seems like it's just flashing up there and I'm like okay I'm, I've booked an appointment I've been a bit cheeky and not been booking my appointments because I'm like well they're not going to do anything anyway um but really truthfully don't do that yeah just still be monitored um and um that's just the frustrating thing about this condition is like people should honestly tell us and let us know you know these are the things that you need to be doing and checking for your health and it's harder for people who don't go to hospital often because how are they going to find this information out? And then for people who are in hospital a lot, even I still don't find this information out until it happens. So I'm like, I'm sometimes a bit frustrated with the way information is given or passed to us patients. You know, when I say professional patient, this is this is a, this is a part time job, like okay, a full time job, but it's a job, and I need to like have training. I need to know what's happening. Like I can't. I think that's just what is bugging is like there's just you just fall into things when the symptoms happen is when you find out oh this is something that potentially can happen to you so sometimes it's better to know but then it can be scary to know all the things that potentially can happen having to fall so um yeah this conversation more so was just about my experience with it um and everybody's journey is different um everyone has some people actually have to go through the laser eye surgery. Others, they'll only get little mini floaters. And this is more prevalent in SC. Um, people, sickle patients or sickle, people living with sickle cell who have SS don't normally end up having um, major issues in that realm. They have their own batch of symptoms that can be very, quite very bad. So. We all have to just, <clears throat> it's just learning about what you're most likely going to experience and then finding ways to just allow your mind to just be okay with it, which mine isn't always 100%, but it's just learning ways to just be like, okay, this potentially can happen. It's like preparing yourself in case. Um, and if it doesn't, who are? If it does, at least you know exactly what to do and where to go. I think that always helps. I, I mean, we do fire training or fire whatever. Yeah, fire training at work generally. And it's not to say, oh, there's going to be a fire. But if there is a fire, at least you know what you're going to go and do or where you're going to go. So, yeah, people think it's you're wishing bad things on yourself, you know. But no, sometimes information, knowledge is power. And you won't be stressing yourself out. Well, I stress myself out. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is just brief updates, cigarette apathy um and i'll probably talk about other symptoms in other videos so thank you guys for watching and listening um moorfield eye hospital is great in terms of ophthalmology and everything you can go to your general own hospitals so they should have ophthalmology departments there to book your appointment so you can at least let the doctors take a record of what's happening with your eye i realized that um what they'll do is they'll put these drops in your eye Jeez, these drops are so frustrating it will tingle it's what well, it feels like onions on 10 like it will just be stinging and tingling then it will calm down and then your vision goes blurry and then you have this guy come up to you he's sitting in your face like this 
and looking into your eyes, flashing lights, but at least you'll have an understanding and they'll be able to record what's happening in your eye. So yes, this is the things you go through when you're getting your eye checked as well. Just a piece of extra information. So hope all is well and I'll speak to you later. I can hear my friends downstairs. So entertaining guests today. Talk to you later. Bye.